Now that is a work of art. Well, continuing our May is Bike Month coverage, the triplet is back for some frame modifications. So what the client wants now is a reinforcement truss welded from the back uh, bottom bracket all the way to the head tube in the front. And uh, it's going to look uh, something a little bit like this here. This is the uh, tube. But we also discovered a problem with the chain tensioning method we used. And if you take a look, this chain tensioner completely collapsed the tubing here. And that was actually something that I should have foreseen because this tubing that we used on this is called double butted tubing. And what that means is out on the ends where you weld it, uh, it's twice as thick as the middle. And I put that chain tensioner right in the middle where the tube is at its weakest. So the first frame mod we're going to do is remove that tube and install a new one. And the new tube we're going to install is going to be like this. Now this was not double butted tubing. This was aircraft tubing, which is the same thickness along its entire length. So what we're going to do is remove this tube altogether and replace it with another piece of the aircraft tubing. And we'll start by just cutting it out. Once we got the damaged tube removed, we had to uh, grind the frame down back to its original shape. That way we could fit the new tube in. Okay, so I got that removed. And now I've got the new piece fit in fairly well. We just need to trim down this. And I've already marked it a little bit. Okay, so here we go. We've got our new piece, and that's a pretty nice fit. One thing that happened since the bike left the shop, I discovered, is uh, the client said that it was flexing a lot all over the place. It flexed so much, it actually bent. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's not too bad. Uh, this tube is about an eighth of an inch closer to this side. So we've got kind of a banana effect going on the frame. But that's not such a big deal. We can use the heat of the welder to, to warp that back the opposite direction. So I think the way we'll address this is we'll start here at the bottom bracket end and uh, contour both of the tubes to fit there. And then we will uh, clamp the tubes in place and work our way across, uh, fitting one side then the other. And then continue all the way to the front. All right, all that fitting is done. Now there's one last thing that we need to do, and that is figure out a new chain reversing strategy because the crisscross chains was a disaster. But before I get onto that, I think I'm gonna prep all the weld areas. All right, now one thing we're going to do here is take a different approach on the chain reversing scheme. The way we're going to do it now is we're going to come off the top of the back sprocket, come down here underneath the middle sprocket, and then we're going to put this uh, sprocket up here to change the direction again. Off the top, underneath the bottom, over the top of this, onto the front. This is the bearing I have. Um, and uh, the hole here is too small, so I'm just going to enlarge it. Let's take that over to the vise and see if it'll press in. Here's my sprocket uh, pressed onto the bearing. 
I'm probably going to tack weld the sprocket onto the bearing, and that will turn this into a disposable part, uh, but it should, it should survive the process. To clamp this onto the frame, what I've come up with is this. This is an old stem off a BMX or a mountain bike, and the thing must weigh four pounds. I can't believe they ever made stuff that heavy for bikes. But yeah, it's a solid block of aluminum, and uh, this, uh, this will go in there and clamp in place. It's fully adjustable in and out, so, and, and it's super tough also. Now the thing that I need to do is make it so it'll clamp onto this tube, and there's no way I'm going to be able to spread that out. So what I'm going to do is remove this cap, drill a hole down through there for an additional cap screw that, that'll be inside there, and then I'm going to split the whole thing in half. Then we clamp it on and move it wherever we need it and adjust it in and out. We'll begin by boring a hole through this to tap for 5 16 fine thread because that is the biggest bolt that will go all the way through this and get the biggest bite onto the aluminum because there are passages going through here and then the main hole uh, there's only one place and 5 16 was the biggest hole I could find to get in that one place. So now I'm going to split this thing in half and then enlarge the part of the hole that doesn't have threads and counterbore it to accept a cap screw. But before we go to all that effort, we wanted to make sure that the two halves will actually go back together, and they do. So, now, I have already enlarged the hole, I'm just going to counterbore it with a larger drill bit. For you machinist types out there, I know that counterboring is done with an end mill, or a counterboring bit, but I don't have one, so I'm just going to use a drill bit. Now we'll see how this is going to go together. Now before we put this all the way back together, we want to reinstall this cap because that is what is going to separate this. Uh, that cut, the width of the saw blade uh, took out some metal in between that cut. So if we tighten that all the way down, this won't fit anymore. Now it was here that the camera battery died and I didn't notice, but this thing turned out so great. Super tough, fully adjustable. This thing ain't going nowhere once it's installed. With all the fitting done and the new chain roller built, it's time to get over to the welder and uh, get all the tubes tacked in place and then weld them up. Okay, so here's what we've done. We've <clears throat> we know the frame was a little bit bent, so we clamped it to the table, and then we used this long clamp here to spring it back to straight. And now we're going to tack these truss rods in place and weld it all up. Once all the tubes were tacked in place, we went back and welded all the joints. We did elect to leave the frame tubes uh, sticking out the end, that way the client can use those. He has a 3D printer and he was talking about printing something to go on to those tubes. They stick out the front like horns. So now I've returned the frame and the new chain roller assembly to the client and he's going to strip it down and paint it and then he's going to put the bike back together. And he plans to have that done by June Bike Party, which is the first Friday in June. And I'll be there and I'll shoot some footage of the bike. We'll see it riding. We'll see the new paint job. We'll see the way he's decorated it. Uh, he's a pretty extravagant fella. I know he is probably going to outfit it with all kinds of lighting. I know he has a siren he puts on uh, some of his bikes. So we'll finally get to see the completed evolution of the bike in its final form. And I'll post a short bonus video covering all those details. But if you don't want to wait for that video, follow me on Instagram. My name there is wildman.tech, and you see things as I do them there. So that's all for this time. Thanks for stopping in. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Click up here to see my last video. Click over here to see something of mine that YouTube thinks you'll like. And have a good one.